In the heart of Scotland lies a body of water shrouded in mystery and legend. For centuries, the creature known as the Loch Ness Monster has captured the imagination of people worldwide. Over the years, hundreds of thousands of people have come to the loch hoping to catch a glimpse. In this segment, let's explore the history, the evidence, and the stories that surround the Loch Ness Monster. Scotland has a rich history of myths and legends involving water spirits and creatures. The legend of the Loch Ness Monster has deep roots in Scottish folklore, and it's these ancient stories that laid the groundwork for the modern-day legend. There are tales of the Kelpies, which you can also watch on this channel, malevolent water spirits that typically take the form of horses, which lure humans to their doom. These stories establish the notion that mysterious creatures might dwell in the waters in Scotland. For a point of reference of just how varied these legends are, it's not just the Loch Ness Monster or the Kelpies. Scottish folklore also tells of the Selkies, mythical creatures that can transform between the form of a seal and a human. There's also the Blue Man of the Minch. These supernatural beings are said to inhabit the Minch, which is a strait between the Isle of Lewis and mainland Scotland. They are said to have blue-tinted skin and are associated with storms, shipwrecks, and sea tragedies. There's also the Shelly Coat, a mischievous water spirit found in streams and rivers. It's covered in seashells, and it's known for scaring and pranking travelers who cross its path. The list goes on, but let's get back to Loch Ness. One of the earliest recorded mentions of a creature in Loch Ness comes from the biography of St. Columbo, a prominent Irish missionary who lived during the 6th century. According to the story, Columba encountered locals burying a man who had been killed by a water beast. Columba reportedly sent one of his followers to swim across the loch, and when the creature approached, Columba made the sign of the cross, scaring it away. The modern-day image of the Loch Ness Monster as a long-necked, humped creature emerged in the early 20th century. The interest in the Loch Ness Monster was sparked by a sighting in 1933, when a couple reported seeing an enormous animal rolling and plunging on the surface of the loch. This sighting received significant media attention, putting the creature on the map as a popular cultural phenomenon. The most famous photograph associated with Nessie, known as the surgeon's photograph, was taken in 1934 and depicted a creature with a long neck rising out of the water. It was later revealed to be a hoax, as the monster was a small model floating on the surface of the loch. Even though it was revealed as a hoax, people still believe it, and maybe rightly so. In 1960, amateur filmmaker Tim Dinsdale captured a video of a dark shape moving in the waters of Loch Ness. The footage showed a creature with a long neck swimming across the loch. The Dinsdale film remains one of the most debated pieces of Loch Ness monster evidence with some claiming it as a hoax or misinterpretation of other objects in the water. With advancements in technology, scientists and researchers began conducting underwater expeditions using sonar to search for evidence of the Loch Ness Monster. During the 1970s and 80s, several scientific investigations were conducted on Loch Ness to search for evidence of the creature. One notable study, known as the Loch Ness Investigation, utilized sonar and underwater cameras, but failed to find conclusive evidence of a large unknown creature. One investigation in 2019 yielded a study of DNA samples collected from the loch, but nothing conclusive came of it regarding a prehistoric creature or potentially other large reptiles inhabiting Loch Ness. However, it's not all a loss. Leveraging genetics is one way to understand and better protect the life inside Loch Ness and its surroundings. There are theories floating around out there to explain the elusive Nessie. One of the most enduring theories about the Loch Ness Monster is that it could be a surviving plesiosaur. I wanted to speak with a paleontologist to have them assess the feasibility of this idea and if it could be scientifically sound. However, no paleontologist wanted to speak with me, so we're on to the next best thing. I found an article from earlier this year in a publication called The Conversation by Distinguished Professor Emeritus of Anthropology Michael A. Little from Binghamton University. He said, First, a large air-breathing animal would have to surface frequently. That means many more people would have seen it. Second, 
The Loch Ness body of water has existed for only about 10,000 years, since the end of the last glacial period on Earth. But the dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago, so a prehistoric dinosaur could not have lived in that lake. Finally, and perhaps most critical, for the Loch Ness Monster to exist and persist through time, a population of these animals must reproduce themselves. Single animals live only for their lifetimes, and not for hundreds of years, as a legend suggests. The belief in the Loch Ness Monster, like many other cryptids and mythical creatures, holds significant psychological appeal to people for various reasons. If you think about it, some of the psychological factors contributing to the fascination with the Loch Ness Monster bring out a sense of wonder and mystery. I mean, the idea of a creature lurking in the depths of Loch Ness taps into our innate sense of wonder and curiosity about the unknown. Humans have a natural attraction to mysteries and the unexplained, and the possibility of an undiscovered creature adds excitement and intrigue to that story. Building on that, Believing in the Loch Ness Monster allows individuals to escape our sometimes, or often, mundane lives and enter a world of fantasy and imagination. The idea of a legendary creature living in a remote and mysterious location offers a sense of enchantment and magic. The search for the Loch Ness Monster has spurred numerous expeditions, investigations, and adventures over the years. For some, the pursuit of Nessie represents an exciting and daring quest, similar to a real-life treasure hunt. Believing in Nessie can be a way for people to connect with their Scottish heritage or regional identity and foster a sense of pride and uniqueness. That same belief is shared by a community of enthusiasts, researchers, and believers. Joining this community can create a sense of belonging and camaraderie among like-minded individuals who share a common interest. The world is full of uncertainties, and believing in the existence of extraordinary creatures like the Loch Ness Monster can provide a sense of reassurance that there are still mysteries left to be discovered. It may offer comfort to know that some things remain beyond our understanding and control. Belief in the Loch Ness Monster may also be influenced by the projection of personal desires, fears, or beliefs into the unknown. People might see in Nessie what they wish to see, whether it's a symbol of hope, ecological conservation, or the resilience of ancient creatures. This belief is widespread, but scientific evidence supporting its existence is lacking. The psychological appeal of believing in the creature doesn't make it a reality, but it does highlight the complex interplay between human psychology, cultural heritage, and our fascination with the unknown. Nessie has become an iconic figure in popular culture, appearing in books, movies, and other forms of media like this, so thanks for watching. For many, the belief in the Loch Ness Monster may stem from a nostalgic connection to childhood stories or the cultural heritage associated with the legend. Over the years, the legend of the Loch Ness Monster has greatly boosted the economy in the region. Travel from overseas tourists to the area, including both Inverness and Loch Ness, used to number in the hundreds of thousands annually. According to the UK's Office for National Statistics, that number has drastically declined thanks in large part to COVID. In 2019, over 300,000 visitors came to the area. In 2021, that number plummeted to 14,000. And in case you're wondering, in Scotland, lakes are traditionally called lochs. The term loch is of Scottish Gaelic origin and is commonly used to refer to a body of water, in particular, a lake or a sea inlet. The word loch is also used in other Celtic languages, such as Irish and Manx. The reason for using the term loch instead of lake is rooted in the historical and linguistic influences in Scotland. The Scottish Highlands and Islands, where many lochs are located, including Loch Ness, were inhabited by Celtic-speaking peoples, particularly the Gaels, whose language was Scotch Gaelic. The use of the Gaelic word loch for bodies of water became prevalent in these regions and has been retained in the English language of Scotland. The only lake in Scotland that is commonly referred to as a lake is Lake of Menteith. Located in the Stirling Council area of Scotland, the Lake of Menteith is an exception to the general use of the term loch. The name Lake of Menteith likely comes from the medieval period and is believed to be of Middle English origin. It's the only major body of water in Scotland that uses the term lake instead of loch in its name. As for the Loch Ness Monster, 
what are we left with? Really more questions than answers. Whether the Loch Ness Monster is a product of folklore, a long-lost prehistoric creature, or a modern-day hoax, its allure will continue to captivate generations to come. The mystery of the Loch Ness Monster remains unsolved, but the quest for truth and understanding lives on.